you are already engaged in the circular economy. Um, and what we want to do is let you know that you're doing that and how you can continue to do more things. Yeah. Uh, so we, we really met first with many of you at an open Is source it, of the like economy no, bank that we organized okay? um, uh, as part of the Disruptive Innovation Festival, uh, managed by a foundation, you will see it in the presentation, that is a big promoter of the circular economy. Uh, um, and just to emphasize, we're not stuck into this particular concept. What we want to see is a sustainable living for everybody. Uh, and in our state in particular, especially in this year where we're celebrating our bicentennial, so our idea is to um, develop uh, business, organizations, work, uh, activities that will allow Indiana to start the next 200 years on a sustainable uh, footing. Uh, we also want to highlight everything that is happening as a form of encouraging ourselves that things are happening are not as dire as uh, they seem sometimes. Uh, and also to facilitate the sharing of your experiences with other people in Indiana, in the United States, and then uh, all over the world. Um, because the only way to accelerate uh, the adoption of sustainable practices is for us to share as much as possible freely what we already do and works uh, and help others adopt them so we get to a final goal of a sustainable planet. Um, so the group that uh, we had at the Disruptive Innovation Festival in Indianapolis where we talked about um, abandoned places uh, in the Rust Belt and how we don't how we don't want that to continue and we think circular economy is a solution uh, uh, for that problem um, so we had a very diverse group of people uh, from manufacturing from farming uh, uh, John from a non-profit that is working on uh, general sustainability issues in Indiana, a lot of environmental recycling issues, John will talk about them. Uh, but the, uh, what we really want is to have a diverse group like, like you all, uh, because then we can cover again all aspects of both economic activity and personal lives. Uh, and we can also find, and that's another goal of ours, exchanges among ourselves that you might not think of uh, in your own uh, little uh, world. Um, so that, that's uh, what uh, we want to, to go with this. Our, our work will not uh, end uh, in December, but our series dedicated to the Bicentennial will end. But we want this to continue. Uh, we want you to organize this kind of activities, and we'll be happy to help you with research, with our presence, uh, in whichever way we can, because uh, both for Gwen and I, this is both work and a passion. Um, so thank you very much uh, uh, again for coming. Uh, thank you very much, Andrea, for hosting us. Uh, we really love being in places like this one, in places that do this kind of thing, but what we call organic places, uh, not in some you know, standard uh, meeting room. And we're very happy to, to meet you and uh, um, grow this group. Uh, Again, we had uh, events in Lafayette. Some of the people who attended there couldn't come here, but we want to make this connection. So you see, our plan is to uh, add all, all these little circles uh, throughout uh, Indiana and uh, help each other um, learn how to live uh, uh, sustainably. Our partners uh, for this whole series are uh, Sustainable Indiana 2016. Uh, John is uh, its founder. Um, they do a lot of work that also celebrates successes, uh, not only uh, address problems that we all know we have, but show that uh, um, in, in Indiana there are a lot of people doing a lot of things that are very good uh, for the state and uh, for its people. Uh, CAFU Institute, uh, again, they were not able to attend today. It's a social enterprise in Indianapolis. They do, they have a lot of um, 
community-based enterprises, especially for children uh, uh, who do not have enough uh, opportunities to, to flourish in Indianapolis. Um, but they do a great job, and I will talk a little bit about their latest initiative, which is uh, uh, Food Co-op. Will you send us the slides after the oh, sure. interview? Yeah. Can I email yeah. you? Okay. I forgot to mention that we might not get to all the slides, but okay. you will all get uh, the slides. So uh, if we skip some, because it, mm -hmm. it's best for us to talk uh, and for you to talk more than us, you have everything. And if you want to know more, please uh, ask us. We are very happy to share. Um, and um, uh, Dance uh, um, uh, is also Dance Business Company, uh, or Co-op rather, is our uh, partner. He will talk a little bit about what they do, but he is our media sponsor and we are very grateful that uh, he helps us at every event because then we'll be able to promote uh, what we did and what you do with uh, uh, throughout Indiana and uh, throughout the rest of the world. And then we have local partners in uh, some of the cities that we organize events and uh, here we are very happy again and grateful that uh, um, Andrea and the Center for Sustainable Living, what a great name, um, uh, is hosting us. Just a question on the partners. I see there's a co-op and I know CSL is a non-profit. Are they a mix of types of organization or is it mostly non-profits that you see getting partners? Mostly non-profit and it's all voluntary. Uh, right. So we're not looking for necessarily corporate sponsorship. We're looking for people who believe in these things and already do this work right. uh, because we believe this is where we, how we'll be able to expand uh, this network. It so happens that a lot of businesses that operate in this field prefer to be non-profit or B Corp, right? Benefit Corporation, mm -hmm. so not full corporate uh, stuff. Um, if we ever get so in Indianapolis, I hope we'll get Blue Indy to sponsor us, uh, and not necessarily financially, but uh, you know, like providing transportation because it's electric, uh, or you know, uh, talking at this event, so this is the, but uh, we call them partners in, in the sun, not only for this series, but they will become our larger network, uh, mm -hmm. which hopefully will last uh, for a long time. Um, I don't see very well. So I'll just go through some foundational information, what circular economy is according to the people who are thinking about uh, uh, this concept, and uh, then when we'll talk about some ways to measure sustainability, because the ultimate goal of uh, this particular fra economic framework is sustainability. Um, so again, we'll talk about, which is uh, uh, really her expertise, and I cannot recommend her uh, strongly mm -hmm. enough uh, if you ever need to report sustainability to use her uh, expertise. Um, and then we'll open it up to you. We would like to share with us your success stories, and if we have time, we'll go through some of the success stories that we have uh, encountered in the events uh, that uh, we had. Um, and then we'll sit down and try to build a circular economy for, for uh, Bloomington. So that, uh, we hope, is the uh, fun part of uh, all this. And uh, if, if you agree, uh, we can summarize our, our conclusions and send them as an open letter or as a direct letter to the uh, mayor of Bloomington. Um, so that they know what uh, citizens really want from the city. Um, it is up to you. We will, we will uh, if you agree, we will do that. Uh, I'll show you what we did in Lafayette, and the mayor of Lafayette was uh, um, happy that we sent him uh, these ideas. They're already doing a lot of things, but it's always good to hear what the citizens uh, really want and to make them think about uh, uh, alternative economic models that uh, would work much better than the current one. Um, so I'll skip over, um, but I'll show you a little bit. Uh, in Lafayette, we talked about transportation, energy, and sustainable agriculture. Sustainable agriculture is a topic that we cover in, at, at every event, both because it's essential to, to life on this planet, it's essential to Indiana's uh, economy and livelihood, and it's uh, fundamental to uh, everybody. 
um, so the conclusions of our exercise, we wrote them down and then sent them to the mayor. Uh, people wa want more public transportation, want more bike rails, um, uh, they want more renewable energy, they already have, but uh, not enough, they want to go get towards 100%. Um, uh, you see, they want to get uh, uh, full power, right? There are a lot of farms that uh, um, feed um, uh, the city with biomass-based uh, energy. So, um, could you step that way just a step? I'm covering there, there we go, thanks. Is there some remote control for the projector? Oh, but not for the computer, never mind. Yeah. Maybe if you sit on this side of the computer, then you could see the laptop and you wouldn't be in front of this. Because see, the image is coming from here. And yeah, see, so that's that. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm covering yours. It's all right. Yeah. I think what will work is the mouse. Yeah. I think if you, if you yeah. just click on the mouse, it might change the slide. Yeah. Is it just right? Yeah. So then you don't even have to be close to the computer. Wow. <laughs> yeah, good idea. Okay. Yeah, so uh, another thing that people were requesting, the changing of the uh, zoning code so that people can uh, uh, build tiny houses. And um, the, the reason we suggest that we send this letter to the mayor, because whether we like it or not, governance has a major uh, input in the way we uh, change the words more or less sustainable uh, living. Uh, and they're under you know, so many pressures, and I think it's good to, to hear from the people on the ground. They will support them if they have an initiative, for instance, to allow tiny houses uh, uh, or smaller houses. But in any case, changing the uh, zoning codes that uh, uh, cause us a lot of problems, definitely a lot of problems in Indianapolis. Um, Agriculture um, create a culture of eating in-season foods, which is uh, something that uh, we also strongly support. We will change our, the way we do agriculture if we change our habits. Uh, and in fact, we will change the whole economy if we change our habits. Uh, and then the mayor was um, uh, nice enough to read it and uh, respond to us. So we want to do that uh, in, in every place. But uh, uh, it will be up to you. Um, so just a, a little bit of where we're coming from or where I'm coming from with all this work and uh, um, all this uh, uh, speaking about circular economy. Uh, for me, we all know the, what are the sustainability dimensions, but sometimes they're considered equal, sometimes not. I'm in the not category in the sense that uh, economy is a subset of uh, society, of our life, and society is a subset of uh, nature. Uh, and uh, from what I know, uh, what we know so far, there is only one planet that sustains life as we know it. So uh, instead of dreaming that we'll move to Mars, it's best to take care of uh, the planet that uh, we have. But the, so why do we talk then about circular economy? Because economy drives a lot of our life, that's the truth. It's the subject of almost all conversations, uh, almost all policy decisions at every level, local to, to federal. And it's a cause of many of the wicked problems that we found ourselves confronted with, uh, um, not least of all climate change. Uh, so it is the economic framework that we need to change um, in order to reduce the negative impact and increase the positive impact and also to provide uh, a, a good life for everybody. And everybody means not only us uh, people, but there are another 2.3 million species in the, identified so far in the world that share this planet with us and we should be respectful of that. Um, I'm not going to go through this, but it, I always start with another uh, field of uh, inquiry that is much more, much better than, than economics, which is ecology. That reminds us how we are, you know, where we are in the larger scheme of things. And it also reminds us that in nature there are exchanges, and there are equal exchanges where everybody benefits, everybody uh, flourishes. 
it, it reminds us that there is no waste, uh, uh, no concept of waste uh, in nature. For every byproduct, there is somebody that can use it in, uh, for their survival and flourishing. Uh, so, no, with, with all apologies to economists, I'd rather recommend everybody to read ecology than uh, economics. But if you want to, to uh, look at economics, there is industrial ecology or uh, ecological economics where we should uh, uh, base our knowledge. Uh, so we want to emphasize the idea of exchange, which is exactly what we want to happen with the groups that we are encountering uh, um, at all our events. Uh, so what is the, the circular economy then? Uh, it's an industrial model, so we will still make stuff. We will still live in an advanced civilization. The question is how do we do it so we don't destroy our own habitat and our, uh, the habitat of other living things. Uh, that is rather centered around maintenance and not growth. Uh, that is, that uses renewable, long-lasting resources, uh, not short-term, um, um, no, uh, turning them uh, uh, fast uh, uh, over into waste. That is low carbon, low entropy, low waste, non-toxic, clean, uh, nourishing uh, and healthy. Uh, like one mentioned, there is nothing new about it. I think maybe just somebody figure out a way to put a very um, nice name to it, which is so easy to visualize. Um, but it was developed a long time ago in industrial ecology um, that tried to prescri prescribe a human-made system that is operating on the same principles uh, like nature. And you see, you will see many other concepts, even when we will use them, they all converge to the same thing, that we need to change our linear, growth-oriented uh, uh, economic model towards a maintenance circular uh, model. So I mentioned Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Uh, they do another non-profit, uh, Stephen, um, uh, a charity in, in Great Britain. Um, they do a lot of conceptual work and a lot of uh, um, uh, awarding of uh, successes in the circular economy. They do uh, a lot of education. They offer grants for, for students. Uh, and this is the model that they put uh, together based on the principles of cradle to cradle. So we have two major flows of materials and products. One are natural, biological, the others are technical, are our inventions. Um, and uh, instead, of, instead of throwing them to waste and to the landfill, we should circulate them in as closer loops as possible from production to user. They also change from customers to users, again, to reinforce the idea that you should use something and then pass it on to somebody else or to some other uh, usage instead of throwing it uh, away. Um, again, we will not, I will not dwell too much uh, on it, but uh, um, you see that there is a lot of thinking. And fortunately, uh, in Europe, the model is getting traction to the point that it's becoming part of the European Union legislation. Of course, they focus a lot on waste and waste management, not at the beginning of it all. However, it is impressive to see a package uh, at the European Union level for the circular economy, which means that we, will, we in the States will start paying attention uh, to it. Um, so uh, we, you can look at the details uh, um, of this model and to all their work. They publish a lot of studies. Um, for instance, how many jobs can a circular economy create? Because in the end, it has to work for people and it has to work for all the people. Um, they work with a lot of uh, corporations. Um, so they, they do good work and they focus on, only on the circular economy. Um, but I thought uh, I'll put another picture around the circular economy because they were, I, in my view, they were missing the uh, uh, broader picture, the whole, the planetary system, because in the end, whatever we change has to be, uh, to come back into balance with the Earth's uh, uh, main cycles, because that's exactly what we're doing now. 
uh, imbalancing a lot of the natural cycles, uh, which might make uh, uh, life impossible, uh, at least for, the, for human beings, or impossible at this level of civilization that, uh, that we reach. Uh, I also believe that people will not give up easily um, uh, technologies that give us a lot of advantages. So I don't think people will give up flying. But I would give up flying any time if I could go by a, with a ship in one day over the ocean, which uh, um, powered by solar panels, um, and then take the train. Once I hit Europe, I don't care about plane. Um, so again, people will not give up to the comforts of uh, civilized life, but we, we can change uh, uh, the way we do things. And speaking of solar panels, again, uh, all the energy that we're using should be renewable. So there is no room for fossil fuels uh, anymore, both for energy and for the chemicals that we are using. Uh, and here is where uh, agriculture can have an enormous role in changing the way we do chemistry. Um, so the, uh, the main um, processes uh, or the main aspects of the circular economy are again, you, you will see nowhere growth here. So it's about maintaining, reusing, remanufacturing, which is repairing, uh, recycling as the last resort, because once we got to recycling, we have already added so much energy and uh, materials and labor into it, and sometimes you cannot get the same quality, unlike remanufacture, which brings every object to its initial specification. Um, and then everything should be about nourishing nourishing ourselves, the other people, uh, the other living things, and the planet. Uh, and being careful that in everything we do, we maintain the balance of these six, six uh, essential elements uh, to, to life. Um, we also think that uh, all this is great, but it will not work if it doesn't work at local level. And this is where we really want to um, to, to see the changes made. So we can integrate those two major flows, the biological materials and technical materials, but what we need to do is make sure that in every community, uh, people live to their potential, everybody's happy, um, because think about it, if people are, are uh, consumed by other problems, like social problems, economic problems, they cannot care about what happens to the polar bear, for instance, and it's understandable. Um, uh, so, I, in my view, uh, the future of trade will be trading ideas all over the world and making things uh, locally. Uh, and agriculture, again, it's a big field where we have to change the way we do things. There is no reason at all to ship food from one uh, end of the planet to another. Uh, only the incorrect economic signals that we're getting. So uh, I don't believe anything about cheap, uh, low prices. They're just miscalculated, and I think one can talk about uh, that, or we can talk in another session. Nothing is cheap. As a, it has somewhere a cost that is not on the on the labor, uh, on the price tag. So we need all the uh, players in a community, uh, all the stakeholders, uh, even the ones that have no saying, like nature uh, and wildlife, to be engaged in exchanging among uh, each other. Uh, where again, you try to find. Um, an uh, output, an input for whatever output you do not use. Um, of course, if you, if we understand physics, it's impossible to eliminate waste or everything uh, degrades at some point. But it doesn't have to happen the next day or in a year. It can last for a hundred years if you uh, work at it. Um, and then all these exchanges are facilitated through money and uh, transportation. Transportation, it's a big contributor to climate change. Why? Because we're shipping stuff uh, back and forth uh, from one end to the world to another, or even from one region to another. So in Europe, there is a lot of trucking of agricultural products that are produced in every country. 
that, but somehow it's easier to import the tomato uh, into France from Italy and vice versa with trucks crossing the two countries all the time and destroying the, uh, the air. Um, and we need to find clean forms of transportation and nothing is cleaner than mass transportation and nothing is better than public transportation. So in, in every small decision that you make, both in your work and as a person, try to think um, um, around the small things or you know, sometimes trivial thing uh, that uh, uh, you're acting upon. Let's say you're making a purchasing decision. Uh, take a little time to think, where did that come from? Do I really need it? Um, uh, should I insist that it's made locally? Uh, to the store because this is how, in my view, change will happen. Less through legislation it will come, but through our small uh, uh, actions. Uh, since we all are interested in seeing uh, sustainability become uh, reality. Um, how we can have our own uh, local go goals, but I think since. Um, um, the, the problem that we have created are global and in fact the whole planet. It's best to converge on some goals that have already been established at a global level. Uh, and again, I won't go uh, through, through them, uh, but the sustainability goals uh, uh, set by the United Nations for 2030, I think it's an excellent list uh, uh, to uh, go by. So. Uh, their aims are both social, both econ uh, economic uh, and environmental. So, like social, no poverty. Um, partnerships uh, for these goals. Um, clean and affordable energy. So they co cover the whole spectrum of sustainability uh, dimensions. So that's, uh, that's all about circular economy, a very short uh, introduction, uh, but again, we don't want this to be too much of a presentation and rather uh, discussion. So I'll ask now uh, Gwen to uh, talk a little bit about uh, performance measures. So this is the best spot. <laughs> As Sylvia said, my area of expertise is sustainability reporting. Um, my original career was in accounting. So um, I come with a uh, financial background, managerial accounting background, auditing. So I know the financial world. And um, I used to be an academic, and I taught accounting for a long time and kind of got bored, you know, with, okay, debit and credit, and this equals this. And, you know, I thought, how can I incorporate what I really care about into my professional world. So I got to take a sabbatical, I started studying about environmental accounting. Uh, I thought, this is great. This is something that is relevant to businesses and that's kind of how I took off with that. Um, I think sustainability reporting is just one additional kind of reporting. Financial reporting deals with finances and sustainability reporting is the non-financial reporting, social, economic, and environmental. So all of those affect profit and loss. And, and I'm going to show you here um, what, oops, here we go. Um, there's a lot of names for sustainability reporting. Some of you may already hear, you know, triple bottom line, uh, corporate social responsibility. Corporate citizenship, corporate responsibility, environmental social governance, ESG. So there's just a ton of ways to identify this. And you, if you've seen any of these phrases, they're pretty much talking about the same thing. And some of them have more emphasis on social. Some of them have more emphasis on governance. Um, but this is what we're talking about. And um, what... The triple bottom line 
talking about what your impacts are, economic, you know, environmental, and social. And when I used to teach, um, I was very lucky to have a course that was dedicated strictly to sustainability reporting and actually doing reports for organizations with students. Um, we did the uh, Indianapolis Airport for them, and uh, we produced a professional report by the end of it. But at the beginning of every one of these projects, I had the students record their own social, economic, and environmental impacts for two weeks. And they learned an enormous amount about their own impacts. And so I had one um, student was telling me how many times he flushed the toilet. <laughs> you know, and I said, oh, that's a little too much information. But, but he took it to heart, you know. How long, I said, tell me your showers, about your showers. I want to hear about that. And, and how much money are you spending and where? You know, where's, where do you get your money? And I said, this is all confidential. I'm not going to, you know, publish what you tell me about your money. Um, and then the social. What are you doing in the community? What are, you know, what are you volunteering? And some of them said, I have no time to volunteer. I just go to school. And some of them were volunteering with the university, uh, you know, or some of them with, in their church. I said, whatever it is you do that benefits society, let me know how many hours. And they walked away with, I said, if you're going to do this for another organization, then you need to know and personally. So it was a great exercise. And, and you know, you might all do that yourself. Say, you know, I'm going to take two weeks and figure out how much trash I, I throw away in two weeks. You know, um, people found out they were driving way too much. You know? Uh, the economic or the environmental would be how much carbon do you think you're, bur you're burning up? But, you know, do you walk? Do you take um, public transportation? So that's what we're looking at with organizations. You know, what are your impacts? And there's both positive and negative. You know, uh, oftentimes we, we look for the negative, but you also have positive things. And the, the negative things are good. I, I view that as good because then you can correct problems. And you can go about correcting what you're doing that's harming the environment or harming society. Um, okay, why do it? Um, save money. I mean, I like to talk about the money part because that speaks to a lot of organizations. Hi.